Hey, Child Free Wealth listeners. So what you're finding here is this is a bonus episode or a series of bonus episodes, technically, where I sit down with Anna from We're Not Kidding and her husband, Grant, and we go through financial planning, like real financial planning, life planning, their numbers, their life. And what you're going to find is they're like a lot of people. That means you might be able to get a little bit about what the process is for being financial planning and kind of tips and tricks, but this is not advice for you. I'm giving them advice, not you. So this is for entertainment and educational purposes only. There's a series of these episodes. So if you like this one, grab the next one. Um, before we dig in, I do have a little disclaimer I'm going to have to do, and then we can actually dig in. So um, here's a disclaimer. Anna and Grant have agreed to have their financial planning sessions recorded and shared. They are not being paid for this session or paying for financial planning with me. If you're watching this session, remember that the advice I am giving to Anna and Grant is for them only and should be considered education or entertainment for your purposes. Sorry, all the legalese I have to do, like, welcome to my world, like, it's all paperwork. So let me introduce myself. Anna and I met, but Grant and I haven't, um, and then we can get to know each other. So my background, my PhD is in adult learning. I'm an advice-only, fee-only certified financial planner, which is a fancy way of saying I teach people to do this. I don't do it for you. Um, I'm also child-free and the founder of Child-Free Wealth. That's not what's important. So tell me about you guys. Like Anna and I met in the podcast, but Grant, like, did she like drag you to this kicking and screaming or she's like, <laughs> I have this really weird idea or what? Yeah. You know, she mentioned it. And my first, I think what I said is <laughs> that my like gut reaction is no, that sounds like really personal and just uncomfortable. But when I thought about it first, I, I mean... That was like sort of my gut feeling, but I, what I actually felt like, yeah, we've been talking about actually trying to meet with a financial planner for actually years, probably, and just never have. Um, but also, um, yeah, what good content that this would be and, you know, maybe other folks would find some value in it as well. So that feels good. Okay. I'm going to guess something though, Grant. I just got to check. So you went, hmm. If Anna's willing to do this and what I have to do is put up with it being recorded, then it's <laughs> worth doing. Come on. That was really the thought process, wasn't it? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I thought exactly like that. But when you when you say it back to me, that makes sense. Yeah, that could have been <laughs> some of my thoughts. No, I yeah, we just we just never have made time for it. So, um, yeah, it was more like having a, a solution in place already was like, yeah, why not? And that's fair. By the way, you're completely normal. Seriously, everybody's like, I should have done this years ago. And yeah. like, I beat with people in their 20s to their 80s. And the answer is always, I should have. And I'm like, you start where you're at. <laughs> so I read the little like notes and it looks like you two are kind of on, let's call it different pages financially. I saw Anna wants to figure out how to fit, do finances and Grant wants to figure out how to automate it and, you know, get a little further, but tell me kind of what's, what's in your head. What's, what are your thoughts on finances? You can start. Um, I feel like I am a beginner, a beginner. Like, I don't know what, where to start, what to do. Yeah. Money's not my, I, I, it's not my strong suit in the sense of not that I am terrible with money. I don't think I'm terrible with money, but at the this point in my life, I'm not making enough. Or I'm not making what I want to be making. And so it sort of feels like I don't really have the money to like invest or put into savings or those kinds of things. I don't know if that answered your question. That's fair. And I'll come back to it. Grant, how about you? I mean, kind of where are we start and what's, you know, what's in your mind? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, somewhat similarly, it has felt like we've kind of had like, um, kind of a hands-off relationship with our finances for the most part. And we, um, don't typically spend a lot, although we do own our own how or we, we are in the process of owning our own house, um, which feels good. Um, but yeah, we've been kind of hands off and like, you know, if um, an employer offered like a 401k match, we took advantage of that, but we didn't think about it very much beyond that. 
Um, and now I think we are starting to think um, or or be like more interested in in having a hands on relationship with our finances, um, which yeah feels good. And and also it, um, having like kind of a career change recently, we now um, for myself, well for both of us really, um, but it feels like we're getting in a better place financially. Um, to be able to start thinking about some of these things too. So we're past like we we joke about it as the rent and ramen stage. You yeah, know, we, we, we we've gotten past that, but we're not at the point where we're you know, like got a plan for our money. It's kind of just what happens happens. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Totally fair. Yeah, and we have tried at different times. Like we tried mint. Is it mint? Some kind mint, of yep finance thing, and we did that actually for a couple of years and um seem to get some value out of it or at least like an understanding that we're spending too much money on food um and so yeah it'd be interesting to yeah yeah i i feel like we we've had good intentions but we haven't always followed through yeah so so you you gave me a clue then i just gotta ask why not follow through good intentions but like hmm yeah i don't know if this is true for you um it feels like sometimes it feels like for me when i'm thinking about managing money um i think sometimes maybe i get in the trap of like seeing um too many things is like an exception or is like a potential investment. And so we kind of like watch our money, we set a budget and then we're like, Oh, well, um, you know, maybe we should do this thing to the house, for example. And so then we kind of blow our budget for a house project or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's true at all for you, but, um, I know when I think about money and then I'm, it's like, I can always justify, a way to like not stick to a budget. What do you think, Anna? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. The idea of <laughs> budgeting kind of just makes my stomach turn. I know it's good. <laughs> I know I should do it, but I don't know. That's that's what I'm thinking. I didn't ask the question on budgeting. You see, you just like went down a path. You're like, I don't like budgeting. I said, well, what, how do things fall apart? And you're like, I don't like budgeting. Well, yeah. <laughs> well that's probably where it starts. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not bought into the idea is probably mm-hmm. part of our Why? problem. Why? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I don't know. I just, I think maybe it's because like there was a time in my life where I literally was living paycheck to paycheck, like was, and I think now it's like, if I have the little, a little cushion, it's like, well, like, you know, I'm, it's almost like treating my old self who couldn't afford the nicer things. And I think I'm like, um, yeah, I think it's tied to that somehow. The time where I like couldn't outspend anything, like everything had like the my paycheck went exactly to rent and maybe I I had just enough for groceries, that kind of thing. And so then um being in a space where there is a little more room and cushion, it's like, yeah, it's just nice not to like worry about every penny at the end of the day. That's that's fair. By the way, completely normal. Like most people don't have a budget, and you know, uh, Anna and I talk about this in the on our podcast. Uh, this kind of out spending your stupid. You know, you gotta just got enough that you can make get away with whatever mistakes you want to make. But then there's that a point, and we joke about it, but it's true, is where you turn from being a child to being an adult. Kids do what they want and what they enjoy. Adults set a plan and follow. It. By the way, it has nothing to do with age. Like we've all had those moments and. We kind of switch back and forth, but it's that question of kind of like, what's more important? 
And, and Anna, you said something I made a comment about like, you got to make enough money so you feel comfortable or something along those lines. Is there a magic number where like that's going to fix everything? <laughs> well, I know that when it comes to money, no, because <laughs> you like, I feel like you just adjust to what you're making and like can find ways to spend more <laughs> and then like need more. Um, so no, I would like my goal, like I'd love to hit like six figures of income. Um, and I feel like that, I mean, if I maybe am intentional, that would be, that would be a really comfortable income. Like there's plenty there to, to like not have to be on like a tight, tight budget where we can't feel like we can buy anything, but also like we can put stuff away, we can save, we can do, you know, like work towards goals with a little extra. By the way, the data says that isn't the answer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so uh, 53%, last study I saw, 53% of people making six figures still live paycheck to paycheck. Really? Yeah, like, yeah, I knew that. I don't, I don't think I need that. No. I okay. Don't think I need that, but. but it seems to fit, Grant. You kind of like, you get uh, the concept. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, totally. Well, crap. <laughs> so, and, and by the way, the, the, the six figure, like, is a magic number for a lot of people. You yeah. know, like, got to make, a, you know, my wife and I have had this discussion. She's like, first year, I made over 100 grand. And I'm like, cool. Were you happier? She's like, no. You could work less if you want. And she's like, well, but then I won't make six figures. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like <laughs> this is the debate, you know, because what happens is we get these magic numbers in our head. Like if I reach X, you know, when I become a millionaire, it'll all be good. Cool. And you know what happens every time people hit a million, they go, well, what about two? <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it, and, you're, and you're right. And some of that comes up the way we're raised. So, I mean, I grew up broke. You know, whatever came in went out just as fast as it went. And it took me a long time to unprogram that. And I'm still not perfect at it because you're like, well, you know, I might not have a paycheck next week. Mm -hmm. And I might as well spend it this week because I have it. Yeah. <laughs> does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, I don't want to. It's like. Oh yeah, that, that is true. <laughs> I wish that wasn't how I operated, but yes. Grant, what do you think? Is Anna, you know, is anything Anna saying kind of jump out at you? Um, uh, no, I mean it, yeah, it sounds, um, yeah, it sounds like conversations we've had in the past. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because All I, right. I, I think I am inclined to like, um, maybe this isn't true, but I think I am inclined to like, always want to like put stuff away and have things available for, you know, rainy day or whatever, but yeah. or an emergency or something. But that's yeah. true. You're the adult. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's true <laughs> either. But so the way we say it is Grant is the saver and Anne is the free spirit. Mm. Yeah. That would describe yeah. That fits. It. That would describe it. <laughs> now, when you, uh, by the way, Super common in couples, you know, that kind of offset is very common. Now, the question is, do you guys balance each other out like a yin yang or does this free spirit and the saber kind of cause strife? I mean. We don't have a lot of arguments about money, I don't think. Maybe that's more recent that we don't. Yeah, I would say it's more recent that we don't. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I would say this has been one of the, our stickier areas. Like, in not that like we would frequently fight about it, but that we would. It was like sort of this. We just come to an impasse and not really know how to resolve the conflict. Yeah, and I think something actually that's a good point, and something that does come up often is the way that I think um, maybe the way we like feel that pressure differently because I know. Um, there there have been a lot of times where I was really concerned with money and how you know what little we were having or saving or or able to spend or whatever. And I know that that was like 
because that was like a stressor for me sometimes there there were times where you're like can we just stop talking about <laughs> saving money all the time or you know talking about you know our finances all the time yeah by the way you you guys once again are completely normal <laughs> if you haven't watched it yet my my wife she makes me watch this show it drives me crazy uh, married at first sight have you seen this show yet mm. so no. they get they literally marry a stranger as a you know arranged marriage but every time the finances are like that, you know, crash. <laughs> like, how do we do it? You know, I want to spend it on shoes and you want to save it. And, you know, I make more and my, you know, it's just, it's just kind of part of life. Mm -hmm. And saying, well, hey, let's not talk about it anymore. That's, you know, that's not the answer going forward. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's that old don't go to bed, you know, uh, angry, just stay up and fight kind of thing. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, it, it's one of those things where I'm guessing. So, Grant, you picked up a new job when? April. April. And what do you do? Uh, I'm a business consultant. Cool. And I'm assuming that came with a raise. It did. Yeah. How much of a raise? Um, like a, a, over a, um, with bonuses that more than doubled my income. Yeah. And your fights went away. <laughs> I think they changed. That's what you just told me. Like, <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? Did I miss something? No, sorry. I might have missed what you had said there, too. So, so did the fights go away when the, when the salary went up? Um, no. Uh, I think they lessened. I think they lessened. And I think the stuff that we started talking about related finances just changed where we maybe had different ideas of like what we would do with that extra income do you think that's accurate yeah yeah i don't know i feel like our financial talks have been more about like it's a relief <laughs> um to be like his income has been like a relief and then for me, it's often I feel stressed, like, okay, but like, I don't want Grant to be always sh shouldering the income burden for us. Like, I know you've talked about there's like the garden and the rose, and I feel like I want to switch at some point, but I feel like Grant has been taking the brunt of it for us pretty much most of our relationship, all of our relationship. So. What do you feel about that, Grant? uh yeah i've never really minded it i guess um i will say that some of the conversations that we've had have been um you know it, i do feel pressure then to like um maybe overwork and to like do things to make sure that um you know if something happened to me because our income disparity is is kind of great um just making sure that there is like a uh you know a lifestyle that you can maintain that you know our, our current lifestyle you know without my income um yeah so um i think that's on my mind and part of the reason maybe why i want to you know be saving things because i am not a catastrophizer, but I do think that I am like often imagining the worst case scenario, which is, yeah. Um, and, and that's completely fair. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. So when I do these meetings, what I'm looking for is red lights, you know, so things that flash, so one little flash came up and I want to check on it. Um, Grant, do you have long-term disability at work? Uh, no, sure. no. Okay. So when we get done today, I'm going to send you homework. And one of the first things we're going to do is get you a long-term disability policy. Yeah, sure. So this is one of those like weird things about being child-free. Life insurance, less of a concern. Mm -hmm. Long-term disability, giant concern. Because look at it this way. I, I'm going to like make up an a, a experiment because I don't really want to say real things. So an alien somehow takes away Grant's legs. Like <laughs> we got to use something obnoxious. Because like if I get, you know, if I say like you get in a car crash, I'd get really sad if you got in a car crash. Yeah. <laughs> so an alien takes your legs and you can't work. You now have the smaller income of the two for life and additional health care benefit, you know, costs. 
So long-term disability, what we're going to end up doing is getting a plan. They usually cover about 70% of your salary. And if you pay it out of pocket, it actually comes out income tax free. So 70%, but you're not paying income tax, works out about the same. Um, but if you think about it, if tomorrow you couldn't work, well, you guys got a house and all, I mean, you'd be screwed a little bit. Let's be real. Yeah. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. It'd be a so, big life change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially <laughs> because if one person can't work, it's not even like, you know, I got to cut back on work. It's, it's that can't. And you guys are young, shouldn't be a big issue, but I have people, you know, get in accidents or something happens or, you know, and it's life changing. And unfortunately, social security disability pays like nothing. You know, it might be 1500 bucks or two grand or something like that a month, but that's set for life <laughs> until you retire. It goes up a little bit. That's rough. Yeah. Does, it, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, one other question to go along with that, Grant, and we'll get back to the bigger questions. But by the way, you see why I, I'm flashing red light on that one. Like, like you know, we got we to do something quicker on that. Um, for your employer, are you guys in open enrollment right about now, October, November, where you pick your benefits? Um, I haven't checked, but I would imagine that's coming up. Yeah. Okay. When it does, I want you to send me a copy of the benefits, and then we'll go over them. Because we may be able to get long-term disability through there. We may have some better options for health insurance, all that. Um, we're going to like go through all of it because like I had somebody, I was looking through your plan. They literally had 42 different healthcare plans to get picked from. I'm like, ooh, this is going to take me a while. You know, so you want to make sure you have the right benefits and we only have a small window. So what will happen is when you get it, you send it to me and then we'll have to schedule a meeting within that time frame because you only, only have like a couple of weeks to, to do it. But if we can get long-term disability through there, it's going to be cheaper. Do you know if your employer offers it? I don't remember it coming up in the onboarding process, um, which doesn't necessarily mean that they don't, but I, I don't remember it coming up yet. All right. So I'm going to make a note um, on that homework. When the open enrollment benefits come in, and by the way, double check your email because it, it's usually right about now. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you'll send me the PDF of the whole thing and then we'll go through all the benefits and make sure you have the right set. Um, at one point, we'll actually look at your pay stubs and make sure it's getting all there because what happens is often when people start jobs, they sign up for everything. And I'm like, why? Like, you don't need this and you don't need this, but you need that. Like, it's just, you got to get the right combo. Um, all right, sorry. The long-term disability is like one of those we need to fix early. So let's go back to this thought about, you know, who's paying the bills? Well, you know, because that's really what you're asking, Anna. Is like, who's bringing in the who's bringing in the bacon? This is that classic gender roles, and you just it, it, there's a whole bunch of like baggage around it. But are you guys doing your finances together? Yeah. Yeah. What little financing we do, we do <laughs> it together. Yeah. So, like, we have our accounts together. We're we're yeah. doing our financial plan together. You guys are on the same financial plan, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Why does it matter who gets what paycheck? Pride, <laughs> ego. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Like it, it, yeah, I see your point, but also like the inner feminist in me is just like, I want to, I don't want to like fall into those gender roles. Like I, I want to, I mean, I left the nine to five because I've been, I think one of my um, frustrations in life has, has been the pay gap and seeing it like um, play out, not to say that we've had the same jobs, but there have been times when we were in similar roles and just to see like the income difference in this and like, and I feel so stuck sometimes, which is why I left working for other people to work for myself, because I felt like that was the only way I could without going back to school or starting completely from scratch, have like a way to, to break through this and not be stuck at like $15 an hour. Okay. So, and I'm going to, I apologize. I'm going to be very direct with you and, and, and grant, I should have warned you in advance. I'm a very direct coach and planner. So if I'm too direct push back, but like, let's cut through it. So let's say, Anna grant comes back and says, look, I found this perfect job for me thing. I always wanted in my life and it's half the pay. 
Would you be okay with it? Yeah. I would. Yeah. I'd, I'd be like, let's figure out how to make that work. Cool. So what I heard from you, Anna, is I found something I enjoy to do. It's not perfect yet, but I enjoy it more than my day job. Pays less, but I'm happy. So what you're saying is it's okay for Grant, but not for you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that is what I'm I saying. trapped you in that question. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's no way around that, but I completely trapped you. But you see where I'm going with that? Yeah. Now, if Grant follows his passion and cuts his pay in half, is that a gendered role of thing? Mm, I guess. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's not. I mean, okay, it, it yeah. really isn't. <laughs> So why is it if you do it? And by the way, I, I'm respecting, you know, the pay gaps in it, a real issue. We've got a whole bunch of gender issues. I mean, my wife and I, we got, got all types of help because we moved 1,200 miles for her job. And people are like, you're moving for her job? And I'm like, yeah. Like, you know, like I know a lot of that exists. But why in your head is it a, is it a issue for you but not for Graham? Probably because I've never had a salary I felt was respectable. And so like, I've, I've always just been like struggling in that way. So. Okay. So I, I'm, we're going to have to go a little deeper here. Um, actually, I'm going to ask Grant this one. Okay. Phew. Grant. Do, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, when I work with couples, everybody's like their turn. Like seriously. <laughs> And I will say things that you guys have said to each other over the time. It just hears, it comes out different. It's heard different when a third person says it. Yeah. So Grant, does Anna's salary determine your respect for her? No, no, definitely not. Yeah. And we have had a similar conversation before. It's interesting to um, uh, just this like, idea that like we both have in different degrees that you know salary is some kind of indicator of value when it's like I think about the work that I do and the work that Anna does and it's so different and it's like I feel like the money is in no way representative of like the value that we bring into the world um it's just a product of different industries I suppose but um yeah. So yeah, um, not at all. What do you think about that, Anna? Yeah. <laughs> um, I do. Yeah, I do appreciate the support that I get from Grant. And I, and I can feel it. I've got a pretty good BS detector. He's not BSing. Yeah, there's a love there. Yeah. That, I, that that can be felt. Yeah. And yeah, and I do love what I do. And I'm grateful for his support in that too. And that sounds like a great combo. And what I'm hearing is if someday later, you know, Grant wanted to follow his passion, you would support him. Yeah, you, you you mentioned the gardener and the rose, and this is the way me and my wife do it. One person's growing and one person's providing support. And by the way, support could be lots of things. It could be financial, it could be literal support. I cook and clean. You know, I do the gardening literally so she can do her job or whatever it is. But what I'm hearing is Grant's nice and stable and relatively happy your job, Grant. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Not it's not broken, you know, we're not upset. Don't not, need to change tomorrow. Yeah, not at all. So what's wrong with you growing, Anna? I don't, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are days that Grant is seeing him really stressed. Um, like there were a couple weeks recently where work was kind of tough for you. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of felt like I was letting him down. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that way, Grant? <laughs> no. And I think there's been so many other, yeah, 
I mean, it kind of doesn't matter what I do. I'll probably find a way to be stressed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I'm just doing stuff around the house. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't see it as, uh, yeah. I don't feel any extra stress. Certainly. So in other words, you had a bad week at work. It wasn't like, I hate my job. Right. By the way, if you can find a work where you don't have a bad week, I want to know about it. Like, seriously, I've yet to find anyone that's like, oh, my job's perfect every day. No problems. Nobody at work that I hate. Like, whatever. <laughs> um, so what I'm hearing, though, is, Annie, that kind of pushes your buttons a little bit. Greg gets, uh, Greg gets stressed and, like, that makes kind of, like, hit some of the insecurities or is that fit? Yeah. Now, let me play with this for a second. So, Anna, if I doubled your salary, I got a magic wand, Woo -hoo, doubled your salary tomorrow, would that change anything? Not really. That's the truth. You know, you earning a more salary is not going to make Grant's bad week at work better or worse. And I'm also, I'm going to guess this, but let me ask Grant. Grant, when you're having that bad week at work, would you rather have Anna support or an extra paycheck from her? Yeah, right. Yeah, definitely the support. Yeah. There's no amount of paycheck that could that could uh, yeah take the place of that for sure. This is the this is the the problem with like it's a, it's a consumerism problem, and, and I'll send you an article about this, but. We get stuck in this cycle and we have to like consume more and more and more. And we need a bigger salary. And if we're not making a bigger salary, we suck, which is not true. Because let me, let me play with this. So um, if you work as a social worker, you are out there helping people with their lives, trying to like get past their barriers, all their issues. You are making a huge difference in society. A social worker might make 40 grand. Does that mean their work is not good? No. And a financial person might be buying and selling stocks and making millions. Does that mean their worth is more? You're saying no, but you're putting that on you. Yeah. We have some like weird stuff in the, in the financial system as a whole. If there's a job that actually has meaning and gives back, we pay people less to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on the other side, if you have to like give up your soul to do the job, we pay you lots of money. You know, I, I joke about it, there's like a number where people are like, I will be miserable for that number. <laughs> like, and that's the big number. But yet in your head, Andy, you're going, wait, it's about the number. If I make six figures, I have more worth. What are you thinking, Anna? I'm just wondering why I like, yeah, how I've, I've always been someone who cares more about like doing good than like the money, but all of a sudden that is like completely flipped and I don't understand like when that happened or why, but like, um, clearly I haven't like given up on trying to do in my eyes like I, I do think that the work I'm doing has an impact and that's what keeps me going and like um but you know the financial piece isn't there but yet it really does matter to me and I don't know when that became so important by the way it became important like 20 years ago like when, when you started talking about your pace you know I make this per hour and, and like people like it's a measuring contest I mean it really is it's a terrible thing of, well, how much do you make? Well, who cares? You know, if you're happy, what's, what's it worth for you? Like, okay, cool. So maybe Anna, you know what? Let's, let's flip this. You give up your mission. You give up what you're doing that's got a value and we just get you a nine to five job that pays well. Would you be happier? No. <laughs> <laughs> it won't last. <laughs> And I'm hearing, but let me just check it. I'm not hearing Grant putting any pressure on you for making a certain amount. No, he, he doesn't. Okay. 
Now I'm going to ask you a rough question, Anna, and I apologize. And Grant, you might have to give her a hug in a second. <laughs> oh, God. Whose voice is it in your head that's saying you need to make more? Mind. I'm 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 willing to bet it's not. Let me let me go why let me dive into this. Here's the thing. You told me you're about a mission and giving back. That's not the same voice that's saying hey, you need to make more money. So the voice that's saying, hey, you need to make more money is probably something in society, culture, family, mentors, people you've talked to, books you've read. I I I don't know. Yeah. But identifying that voice is going to help you to understand, well, where did it come from? Yeah. Did that voice, did this, hey, drive for, I got to make more money. Did it happen at a certain time or has it always been with you? Um, I remember when I worked at Seed Savers with you, I got frustrated then. Income mm -hmm. was part of why I chose to leave. Um, so I, I, I think maybe the first time I started thinking about it was what year was that? 2016, 2015, that that really started emerging for me, but I don't know. Maybe it is in part like family. Um, not that they put it on me, but seeing them you know, have that goal and meet it. And, and now I'm watching them and I'm like, okay, like I, I'm not there yet. Like, what am I going to get there to kind of thing? Yeah. This is the comparison to the thief of joy routine. Yeah. You know? Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, the reason why I have you identify the voice, it doesn't have to literally be a voice, but just where it's coming from is that we can work through it. So by the way, you found an income disparity between you two, pissed you off. I'm good with you quitting the job. Like seriously, that, that's a good, good answer. Probably not going to fix the system. But then <laughs> you can either choose to make your mission to like, yes, I'm going to beat everybody and have a higher number. Or do I want to make an impact? And yeah, it's kind of possible to put the two together, but it's like, nearly it, it, they kind of don't go together also. Like the amount of people that, are able to follow their mission 100% and get the giant salary to go with it, it's pretty low. <laughs> like it's, you know, I hate to say it, but you kind of do make choices because if I'm trying to give back to the world, you know, I got a lot of people who work for nonprofits. Working for nonprofits are great for your heart, terrible for your paycheck. Yep. That doesn't mean they have less worth. That's the challenge. Yeah. So are you sitting around comparing your salaries with your family? Um, no, I wouldn't say that, but I do know that like, I mean, we talk about salaries. I don't talk about mine. They talk about theirs. <laughs> I listen. Oh, I always think of this as like a social media problem. You know, we see people, you know, they buy the Mercedes, but we don't see the payment that goes with it. You know, we see the big salaries, but we don't see the, you know, the, the sacrifice they're making, you know, uh, the, the classic of this, we don't, we see the big salary, but we don't see the heart attack that they have at 45. Like, yeah, that's the, the, the balancing act. So you think your family thinks you're worth less because you make less? No, no, that was weird when you asked that, like, I know that my, I know the answer should be no, <laughs> but I do like, I, there was a little pause. I don't know. Um, huh. I didn't realize how much money stuff there is around family. Oh, it's all like, I, I like, this is like all your money stuff comes from your history, your family. And I'm trying to move forward. I'm not trying to like go back to tell me about the way you're No, that's not what we're doing. You know, it's more of this is having an impact. Yeah. See, what's happening is, you know, so you two are child-free, correct? 
Would you say by choice or not by choice? What do you, what's your? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, by, by choice. choice. Okay. Joffrey, by choice. Cool. So you have chosen to leave the standard life script. Standard life script says you go to school, you get married, you have kids, you buy a house, you, you work 20 years, you get a watch and you go. But then you're saying, but I need to get back on it for my career. Well, no, you don't. Being child-free means you have the time, money, and freedom to do what you want. And you're saying, well, what I want is a bigger salary. No, that's not really what you want. That's what you feel like you have to do. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Grant, here's the tough question. So if Anna, like, put her heart and soul into something and never got paid for it, would you still respect her? Yeah. Yeah. Without question. Yeah. I know that that is hard for you sometimes to feel like you're pouring a lot into something that you're not, you know, you're getting a lot of benefit from, but not always financially feeling like you're getting what you deserve. Certainly like, you know, compared to the amount of work that other folks do and what they get back. But yeah, there'd be no loss of respect for sure. Yeah. And if it wasn't hard for you, that's great. You hear that, Anna? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Grateful. That feels really nice. (laughs) I'm going to go one further. So Grant, if we, if you weren't, you know, if you didn't have a great job, you know, as great a job you have or whatever, you made a shift and you guys had to cut back on some of your expenses, maybe a smaller house or not go out to eat as much. Would you still be okay with that? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what I'm hearing is that for both of you, you're okay with following your passions, even if it hurts you financially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Then you know what? For everybody else, they're not going to understand it, and that's okay. Because they can't, they're not there. You know, th- th- this is one of those things where you have a different path on life, and... That's okay. Now, by the way, we still have some spending and budgeting things we need to do, like, you know, <laughs> like everybody. But it's not about the big dollar. Anna, what are you thinking? No, I'm not. I'm not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just meant in general, kind of like, where's your mind at? Oh, but I, like, I still want to make money. <laughs> Why? Um, I think just to like, you know, we have dreams of traveling and, um, just to, just to be able to live the life that we want. Well, Grant just said, if the life was half the lifestyle you're at, you'd still be happy. I don't know that I fully believe that (laughs) because I feel like we've lived that and you are constantly stressed about money. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose I am less stressed about money right now. But um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of trade-offs that are made. Mm. For sure. I guess we haven't really talked about that since we've, you know, yeah, it's been since April that we've sort of lived, been, you know, your salary doubled and Mm-hmm. But also my availability to like do things besides work shrunk <laughs> yes incredibly and yes. that's been hard to deal with that has been stressful a different kind of stress mm-hmm. yeah also Anna there's a difference between hey we have no money we're living paycheck to paycheck and we make a conscious choice to cut back mm. there's yeah. like that there's that that clawing and scr- you know the, the I like this analogy they say like you know Money's like oxygen. Too much is not good for you, but you know we don't have it. Like, seriously, like, yeah, that's, but it's a mindset thing. You're picturing 
you guys struggling. Right. I, I drew you a picture of following your dreams, even if it meant less fun stuff you're buying, or maybe you're traveling a little less fancy. And you guys yeah. said, yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that is a good, that is a good distinction that I hadn't made. What I'm trying to do, Anna, is get you to think about a different set of goals than money. We, we'll still earn money. Like, look, we're not, you know, it's not like, you know, Anna's going to get no paycheck. But the question is, what you've answered is, earning more money does not make you too happier. Is that fair? Yeah. Like, the level you're at right now is okay. Making it happen. We'd like to save more for future. We, we want to get better about the finances, but we're okay. So that means the foundation is solid. Now, Anna, maybe instead of measuring net worth or salary, you measure number of lives impacted. All right. Gotta stop making me cry, Jay. Dr. <laughs> Jay. <laughs> I apologize. It happens in most of my meetings. I <laughs> But here's the thing. The reason why the tears come out is that's a release. Because here's the thing. I'd, I'd rather see like a, a chart on your wall behind you of numbers of lives impacted. And I'll bet both of you would be more proud of that number than number of dollars earned. Yeah. And if for the rest of your life, all you did was drive number of lives impacted, you'd probably be pretty happy with your life. Now, beyond, we have to cover the basic needs. Like, we already yeah. assumed that. Yeah. Now, let's make some money while we do it. But it's a different purpose. Because somebody would be like, well, you know, I make six figures. And you're like, yeah, well, I impacted a thousand lives this year. How much about you? <laughs> and they're like, oh, I did a thousand spreadsheets. <laughs> you're like, <"Yeah." laughs> Grant's like, oh, yeah, I do this. I do the spreadsheets, too. No, <laughs> Did I did I pick on you, Grant? There, you do spreadsheets all day. Um, not all day, but there are some <laughs> days that is a lot of spreadsheet work. <laughs> but, and I, I, I'm willing to back, Grant. You are not excited about the number of spreadsheets you complete. Yeah, um, I do like spreadsheets maybe more than the most <laughs> than the average person, but uh, I don't feel like extra fulfilled by the number of spreadsheets that I that I work on. No. See, what happens is, Anna, you told me doing a job just for the money is what you left. But then you told me, I want to go back to that. This is part of the problem when you turn your hobby into your living is it's a good way to make it like something you hate. <laughs> You're like, now I'm driving to a dollar sign and I didn't get my dollars and that falls apart. And Right. You can lose happiness in the middle. Yeah. Grant, what do you th what do you think? And I picked on Anna a little bit too much today, but kind of what's your reflection on it? Um yeah, uh it is interesting. Yeah, because we have kind of similar conversations sometimes. It is like whenever um I think whenever we're like thinking consciously about like what do we actually want and focus less on like what do we think we should want or what do we think or what do we feel pressured to want and to achieve then I think like we're both super aligned in that you know what matters more is the impact that we have and we like yeah yeah I don't think we have um a lot of like I don't want to speak for you, but I don't think we have a lot of like pride around like the amount of money that we make, you know, like our drive to have a certain income level is more based on like what fun things can we do together or what can that money, you know, support in terms of like our um, hobbies or, or how can we use that money to like do good in other people's lives. So, but I think, we don't have a lot of ego about like the amount of money that we have when we think about it consciously. But I think we do often both fall into the trap of like, Oh, I have to make this amount of money. And isn't it cool that this is my income and I can say this now or whatever. 
Yeah. So what I'm hearing is you guys are like at the core saint. What you talk about and what happens in the, you know, in the noise mm -hmm. is where the issue is. And, and, and by the way, the answer to that is to stop going on social media. But, you know, <laughs> no, but I mean, I, it's all the information we get into our head. I, yeah. It really drives me crazy. By 40, you have to have X amount in the. No, you don't. You have to be going to your goals. You know, and that's really what we're working towards is trying to figure out what your goals are financially. Because here's the thing. So, Anna, you said, hey, I don't like budgets. Now, if I say, cool, getting you guys on a budget is going to allow you to impact more lives. You okay with that? Yep. Is that going to keep you on the budget? Probably. That's the point. Anything else we've tried. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why budgets fail, first of all, first month is going to suck no matter what. And, and next time we get together, we're actually going to do a budget and some fun stuff around that. But I start with the goals because if you don't have a big enough goal, then Amazon is much more attractive than that goal. Amazon's my problem. I'm just calling it. <laughs> like, don't mind me. I'm just talking about myself right here. But no, like, and it doesn't really matter what the goal is. You know, for me, my number one goal is I have to be able to provide support to my wife. And my second goal is I want to buy a boat. It's not a good financial goal. I'm telling you right now, buying a boat, bad idea. <laughs> but I enjoy it. Okay. So like, that's when I go to say, hey, do I want to buy X? I go, A, is it going to impact me and my wife? No. Okay. The next question is, is it going to slow down getting to my goal? The answer is yes. Then I have to want it more than the goal. Yeah. That's why budgets fail. If you're like budgeting just for budget's sake, you have to be a real nerd to do that. And actually, Grant's got enough spreadsheets, so maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you have to have both of you. That might be him. <laughs> I do love creating budgets. I just don't stick to them. <laughs> Well, what I'm going to take you through, um, the budget system I use is called the money management system. Breaks it into four things. Must, shoulds, coulds, and won'ts. Must are the things to keep the roof over your head. Should are like, you know, I should pay down my debt, save for things. I should. And coulds are like, nah, let's go out for dinner. And then the won'ts are, we all have a list of things we probably should cut out. I don't know what yours are, but you know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see the smile on both of you. Uh, if nothing else, you guys know what each other should cut out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. If I no, I do know what it would be for you. Yeah, we're not going to call that out today. We will do that next time. <laughs> we already beat on it a bit too much. No, um, but what happens is it's all set towards your goal. So, Anna, what I want you to be thinking about is living on the budget is probably more important than making more salary. Now, by the way, it may not feel that way because like, you can measure the salary easier, but actually Grant will have a good measuring system for the budget anyway. I'm not worried about it. He'll have pie charts and you know, graphs. And Am I right? Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> um, and the way we do it, Grant, just so you know, the free spirit is required to make one change on the budget every month. They can't just go, oh, yeah, you got it, Grant. Good luck. I don't care if Anna changes $5 of it. Like... <laughs> it's part of that engagement. I'm going to swing back to Grant. Grant, how you feeling? Uh, yeah, good. Yeah. Glad to be. Yeah. Good. And glad to, I think this like reinforces the fact that we are kind of on the same page and um, yeah. Yeah. Excited to keep learning more for sure. Anna, how are you feel? Good. Like I just had a therapy session, but good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unfortunately, um, sometimes it feels that way, <laughs> especially with couples. But I mean, keep in mind the difference is I'm my goal is always to move you forward. So yeah. I'm on the coaching and planning side. So it's like, okay, cool. I understand where we've been. I acknowledge it. Where are we going? Um, what what you do with your family, that's a separate discussion. Like <laughs> not for this group. Yeah, but, no, I feel hopeful. Um, how, what's the measure? Is it is it uh, salary, live serve, number of people interact? What's the what's the measure of success for you, Anna? It's it's the lives that I get to interact with 
yeah, for sure. Okay. Part of your homework is going to be to actually figure out a measure. And Grant's going to be able to help you on that. Uh, Grant, I'm assuming you can help her on determining leading lagging indicators for her success. Yeah, right on. <laughs> He's like, I do that all day for look, work. I might as well do that for him. <laughs> Uh, but it's the whole point of a shift. So for example, like some of my colleagues, um, but my colleagues have kids, they actually, their goal is number of days they get to volunteer or work with their kids or go to school. Like that's a good measure. The dollars and cents are separate. I don't know what your measure is going to look like, but if we can get that down, everything else will become easier. So a couple things, um, actually, before I go through your homework, what questions do you two have for me, if any? I don't think I have any. I don't think I have any yet. Yeah, I'm sure we. I'm sure I will once we get into the weeds a little bit, though. Yeah, that, that's the stuff you're gonna love, Grant. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let's do the simulations and let's do the math on this and let's run this out. You know, mm -hmm. I understood. We have to do a bit of both. A um, couple of weedy things. So open enrollment, long-term disability, those are kind of the two things I want you to look for. I mean, if you get the open enrollment packet sent to me, we'll do that meeting. Um, if we have to move the time up, we can do that. No big deal. Um, I'm going to also send you to uh, access to my new system. It has uh, 15 courses and uh, 100 videos, all that. But what it's going to do is do, it's going to do initial assessment. So like, where are you? What do you got for money? All that. You know, I, I, don't, I try not the first meeting. I'm like, the money's very rarely the issue. It's more the bigger issues and the goals and the life and the that we have to get first. So that assessment will get you there. It'll also give you priorities. Uh, in the courses, there's actually one on um, figuring out your goals. That's kind of what we're talking about here. Then we'll talk about the foundations of finance, and then we'll talk about saving and investing, all that fun stuff. Uh, but first step is we got to figure out those goals. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So next time we get together, uh, ideally, it may actually be the open enrollment so we can do the nuts and bolts of that because it's only once a year. But then we'll also work on budgeting and some numbers and work that through. But without the goals, the budget will die after, what did you guys get to, like three to six months last time? That might Maybe. be generous. Yeah, <laughs> I was being nice. Yeah. Let's call it three months. But we get the goals done so that the way I say it is the first month on budget always goes bad. You know, like the hot water hero go or a transmission will go or something like there's always something you're like that budget was great. And then this happened. Great. <laughs> and then we get past that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it'll be. <laughs> What's that? So it's going to be our washing machine. Of course. Yep. It'll be something like that. Um, and then we just work it through and then keep going and you'll be fine. And then we'll start working on the saving, the investing, all that fun stuff. Um, we need to swing back to Anna and, once we have our goals, then we can figure out how to get there. That's the next step after that. Because um, the challenge is if we don't have the goals, we might end up someplace we don't want to be. Now, we could have worked on an answer to get you a better salary, but if that's not what matters to your heart, you get to that point and you're like, yeah, that wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, you perceive that right, because we have had lots of conversations where it's like, I I will set goals around money and I just like, nothing motivates me except, yeah, mm -hmm. whatever I think will motivate me doesn't, but you drew it out today. So, yeah. Yep. Something on this live serve, something, something along those lines, you know, Grant will have to put his thinking cap on how do we measure that, you know, but that's going to keep you going. And you're going to go, well, that has nothing to do with numbers. I know. That's why we, you know, it's just, we, you've learned the numbers don't help you. Yeah. Now, what's funny about this is Grant's going to be driven by the numbers. But it's possible to have two sets of targets, but still be working on the same plan. Cool. You're, you're kind of, do, you're, you're going in the same direction, but for slightly different reasons. Yeah. And it works out. Awesome. Yeah. Now, Grant, I have to ask. So you got dragged here. Anna said, "Hey, we're gonna meet this weird dude and you know, talk through." How how you feeling about it? Good. Yeah, it was less painful than I imagined. So yeah, 
I don't know what I imagined, but <laughs> I was going to ask what, what pain did you expect? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, what I, what I'm always conscious of is like probably not putting away as much as should be or could be probably not as, um, aware of all the details of our finances and i didn't expect especially after anna talked to you i didn't expect you know to be shamed about any of that but i'm always just in the back of my mind conscious that like could be doing more and i just yeah having to face that fact sometimes is like yeah hard to think about hard to think about like oh well this many years worth of waste op wasted opportunity to you know put money away or whatever so um yeah. And by, by the way, that's completely normal. Also, everybody expects like me to come in and go, I saw you spent $5 on that latte. And that's you know. the thing is, I don't measure against anybody else. I'm looking to see, are you working towards your goals? Cool. So if you're telling me you're not putting a lot of money away, but you're impacting a lot of lives and you guys are happy. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, the mindset. Because what happens is if you read online, the answer is, well, by this age, you're supposed to have two times your salary. And this it says who? Like, seriously. And, you know, it, I, I joke around. It's like, you know, the one size fits all clothing that fits nobody. You know, that's what those general rules of thumb. And all of those assume you have kids. So anything you're reading online that says you should do this. Mm, chances are that benchmark doesn't fit you too. Sure. Interesting enough, it doesn't fit a lot of people because everybody's life is different. You know, it, it, I mean, even just live where you live in the U.S., six making six figures in New York City, you are barely living on the off the street. Like, <laughs> but in Iowa, that might be huge. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to send you an email with homework. Um, I, after every time we meet, you're going to get homework, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Part of what we're doing is we're trying to build accountability into this. So, like the the open enrollment is just kind of some nuts and bolts, easy stuff to do. But the big one we're working on right now is goals. So one of the homeworks is going to say, figure out this measure for Anna, whatever it is, and we'll use that as we're, as we're targeting things. And by the way, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like it's a first shot at a system. And then we'll try it and see where it goes. Um, and then Grant's going to be like, well, do you really want that latte or do you want to impact more lives? Like, <laughs> Can you see him saying that, Anna? No, actually, no, I would he's, just let you he's a very much like he'll put the card in my hand whenever I want something. So I am kind of. <laughs> well, then maybe Grant's enabling some of those. No. 100%. Yeah. Um, you, one of the things, Grant, I saw your note about, you know, kind of setting your finances to a point where you have to think about it. We're going to get there. We're going to automate a lot of it. We're going to end up just kind of setting it there. And then that actually helps you not overspend and all that. We'll work on all that, but the goals are what matter. Cool. Any, cool. any last thoughts from you two? No, just thank you. This yeah. was, this was awesome. Had no idea, but this was, yeah, really cool. Cool. So we're going to get back together next month and it'll either be earlier because of the um, open enrollment or we'll do it kind of the end of the month. And what we'll try to do is, so that'll be November. We're going to try to get a budget in place for December. Now, you guys big gift givers in December? Yep. Cool. So that should make it a great discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, wow, it's Christmas again. I didn't realize I have to buy gifts again. And it's like, every year, kind of at <laughs> the same time. Right. Yep. So we will uh, work on setting the budget and hopefully getting you out of you guys do any of the arms race for but for gifts? Like you give somebody a bigger gift, they got to give you a bigger gift each year. Anna's face. No, for sure. No? no, I don't think we do that. Do you? I don't know. <laughs> TBD. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll work through it and we'll get more nuts and bolts. Um, Grant, you'll get used to. Essentially, I try to like rotate back and forth between the bigger pictures and the more tactical stuff as we go along. So we'll do a bit of both and we'll break out spreadsheets and, you know, that'll be the fun stuff. That's what Anna's eyes glaze over. Like, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you like right. details. I do like details. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just not about money. 
Right. That that's the money piece where I glaze over. No, <laughs> maybe. Um, the other thing I want to make sure tomorrow, see what sits. You know, like that next morning, you know, I, I joke about the shower moment. You take a shower, your head will clear out and go, huh. And Anna might come back and say, yes, it is about the money. Okay, we can go that direction. Or she oh. might come back and say, no, it's about the lives. Okay. You know, but I have a feeling you guys are a great team and you'll do well together. So. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah, I think so too. All right. So I will send you an email. Go from there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you so much. That's all for this week's episode of Child Free Wealth Podcast. Be sure to follow Child Free Wealth on social media. Email us at podcast at childfreewealth.com or visit our website, www.childfreewealth.com.